Everybody take their seats. Don't be shy. There are plenty of seats here. So, I can have everybody's attention, please. Thank you. So, today is a uh, sad day for the history of Duke and a joyous day. And uh, let me deal with the sad part first. Um, as all of you probably know, but maybe some of you do not, the seventh president of Duke University passed away early this morning. Uh, Keith Brody uh, was an inspirational leader of Duke. He had been uh, the head of the psychiatry department, head of psychiatric services. Uh, he'd also served as um, chancellor of the university, and he um, really, uh, for eight years, led Duke in many ways, academic, uh, uh, professional, and of course, I um, should point out that Duke never won a national championship in anything until Keith Brody was uh, president. We won our first national championship in soccer, and then we won two national championships in a row in basketball. Um, the university is saddened by his loss, but uh, we uh, remember everything he gave to Duke, and he's in the long line of, of terrific, uh, outstanding, inspirational leaders of Duke University, and we send our best to his family and to his widow, uh, Brenda. So let me get to the joyous part, if I could. Um, Dick Broadhead uh, told the Board of Trustees uh, about a year or so ago that he decided that he would like to complete his 13th year at Duke and then retire. And everyone had thought, well, anybody that's spent 13 years being president of university, that's a long time. And so we recognized that uh, probably persuading him to do anything else was not a good thing to do because uh, Dick was ready to do something else with his career. And he'd done a spectacular job at Duke and really has taken us uh, from, a, as I've said before, a great national university to a great international university. And his achievements are too many to mention today. And today is really not about Dick. It's about um, who is going to be the... 10th president of Duke University. Uh, when Dick informed the board in April that he was going to step down, um, I asked uh, Jack Bovender, one of the vice chairs of the uh, Duke Board of Trustees, if he would head a search committee. And that search committee worked tirelessly uh, for many, many months. It had 19 members on it, and getting 19 members to agree to anything and actually showing up in the same place at once is not easy. But Jack managed to do that as skillfully as any search committee process I've ever seen, and I've been involved with many of them. And so I'd like Jack to tell everybody now what the results were, were of that search committee process and let him tell you who the next president of Duke University is going to be as a result of the trustees' action this morning. Jack Bovender. Thank you, David, and uh, good <clears throat> afternoon to everyone. Uh, actually, it's a great afternoon. Um, when, when, um, and a historic one too, um, it, because for only the 10th time in Duke's history have we had the privilege of introducing a new president. When David asked me to chair the search for Dick Broadhead's successor earlier this year, I accepted enthusiastically, but I also had two distinct thoughts about this. First, that it was a great honor to lead what is the most important responsibility of any board of trustees or board of directors, and that's selecting the chief, uh, uh, chief executive officer. And second, my thought was that I better not screw this up. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the first thing that was on my mind every morning when I woke up was, God, please don't let me screw this up. <laughs> But thanks to um, a remarkable, dedicated, and very, very discreet committee of the faculty, administrators, alumni, and students, I can assure you that that was not the case. Over the past seven months, we have conducted what is the most thorough search in Duke University's history. We solicited feedback from every member of the Duke community, including alumni and friends. We consulted with leaders in higher education and public life around the country who were unambiguous and effusive about Duke's remarkable, and that's the word many of them used, remarkable ascent to the very highest ranks of American universities. 
We reviewed more than 100 nominations and recommendations. We met face-to-face -face with 25 prospects and candidates, and we came together in a, a unanimous and enthusiastic recommendation that the Board of Trustees endorsed earlier this morning to elect Vincent Price as the 10th president of Duke University. <clears throat> Now, you've probably already read his biography, so you know that Vince has been the provost and chief academic officer at the University of Pennsylvania since 2009. You know that he has been a transformative, inclusive, and deeply engaged leader who's had a hand in every aspect of intellectual and student life at that great institution. You know that he is a scholar of the highest order honored by his peers and the public for his work on public opinion. And if you haven't uh, already, I hope you will, watch his freestyle introduction of Lynn manuel Miranda at Penn's commencement uh, this year. I'm not going to try to duplicate that. <laughs> <clears throat> but you probably haven't seen, what you probably haven't seen is what we saw as this process advanced to today's announcement, that Vince Price is a person of great integrity and steadiness, that he is a consensus builder who listens as he leads, that he has great passion for excellence and innovation, and that he will lead by example and by embodying the highest standards and the most deeply held values of Duke University. For all those reasons and many more, I'm delighted to assure you that not only did I not screw it up, but that the entire Duke community will be thrilled and proud to have Vince Price and his wife, Annette, as our leader and ambassador. It gives me great joy now to introduce the 10th president of Duke University, Vince Price. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. <clears throat> I am both honored and deeply humbled to have been selected to lead this great institution. And I would also like to pause for a moment to acknowledge one of my predecessors, uh, Keith Brody, a distinguished physician and dynamic leader of this campus. I'd like to express my appreciation uh, to you, Jack, to Ellen, David, and the rest of the search committee for their diligent work throughout the search process. It has been, from my perspective, just a wonderful ongoing conversation over these many past weeks about the extraordinary aspects of this university, its many accomplishments, and its highest aspirations. I've learned much about this amazing truly amazing community of scholars, entrepreneurs, artists, scientists, dreamers, and doers who have charted perhaps the most oppressive ascent in higher education. I've also learned, importantly, to distinguish shades of blue. <laughs> and blue has been, as you know, for centuries associated with loyalty, truth, and faith. Well, have faith. I am true now to only one shade of blue. It's not too light, it's not too dark, just perfect, it is Duke blue. <laughs> now, in, in all seriousness, what I look forward to most in my work as president will be the absolute pleasure of interacting with a world-class community of scholars, students, administrators, and staff as we face together the challenges and the opportunities of the 21st century as we work together to chart the next phase in Duke's ascent. As you know, Duke is a very special place and this is as evident to the incoming freshman as it is to the longest serving staff member or most senior member of the faculty. It's a place where innovation is fueled by creativity 
and where that creativity is continually informed by the most rigorous and path-breaking scholarship. Most important, it's a place dedicated to improving our lives, intellectually, physically, and socially, through both education and research. Under President Broadhead's extraordinary leadership, we have maintained these core values while also enhancing them through broader engagement with Durham and the wider community, by advancing knowledge across disciplines, and by e increasing access to this wonderful, increasingly diverse institution. The results, they speak for themselves. As Jack said, Duke has arrived at the very pinnacle of education and research. Duke has accomplished this as a community, led by truly fabulous deans, dedicated chairs and other faculty leaders, and by what may be the best collection of administrators in higher education, and also by student leaders, both undergraduate and graduate, who not only wrap themselves in blue, but weave themselves into the very fabric of this community. And of course, Duke alumni, 160,000 proud and passionate graduates around the world. You in this room and others beyond watching, you make Duke what it is. As president, I will work with you to make it even more. A uniquely powerful voice for education and innovation that is more than equal to the challenges and the opportunities before us. And now is the time. The research university today faces an array of forces that may prove as transformative as any recorded to date. The digital revolution has thoroughly reshaped contemporary life, spawning entirely new social practices, consumer markets, and companies. The deep and the broad implications of those transformations for our teaching and research are only now becoming fully appreciated. Duke is perfectly poised to seize unparalleled new opportunities and possibilities to thoughtfully deploy technology in redefining our work. Globalization has similarly broad ramifications. Markets for labor, consumption, capital, they're now thoroughly global in character, and even the most local of enterprises is fundamentally shaped by global events and trends. Duke is again perfectly poised to ensure that our curricula and research programs convincingly address the needs of a globalized society, realizing the full potential of Duke Kunshan University and Duke NUS. And as the world shrinks and societies evolve, Duke can and will serve as a model for promoting openness, diversity, and inclusion. We will continue to diversify and we can do more to realize the full intellectual and social benefit of that diversity. Every member of our community is here to inform and to critique, to offer support and criticism, shaped by unique experiences and perspectives. Every member of our community belongs. If we share our differences vigorously and respectfully, we are all the stronger intellectually and socially. Even as higher education grapples with escalating costs, public support of higher education, of the arts, of basic research is fragile. And sadly, this comes at a time, the very moment, when long, break, long coming breakthroughs in so many fields stand to improve our lives in dramatic ways. Duke, again, is poised to be a leader by showing in the most compelling ways the continuing value of investing in higher education. We can together identify and realize operational efficiencies and at the same time creatively devise new resources. We are poised as well to advance translational research and Duke Health positions us extraordinarily well, not only to innovate in healthcare delivery and set the standard in clinical care, but also to propel biomedical discoveries. We can continue Durham's recent ascendance as an innovative community of startups working very closely with our 
neighbors to advance the quality of life for the wider community and to catalyze new scientific, medical, cultural, and artistic ventures. I am finally confident that the Blue Devils can sustain and expand their excellence on the field, on the court, and in the classroom. And I look forward to becoming a Cameron Crazy, crazy tomorrow night. <laughs> now, in a recent convocation address I gave to new first-year students, I, I spoke to them about what it's like to be new, to face challenges and opportunities. Uh, and I talked with them more specifically about what it's like to be in a new place. Uh, places like Duke and Durham that are steeped in glorious history and tradition, but which are nevertheless places of new beginnings, places continually renovated by the people who live and work here. I thank you for inviting me and Annette to be members of your community. And I look forward to deepening our relationship as we engage in our important work as stewards of this great institution, as spinners of the threads that will tie its distinguished past to an even greater future. Thank you all. Thank you for making me a partner in your work. I can't imagine another place I'd rather live and work, a community I'd rather share, or a color I'd rather wear. <laughs> go, go Blue Devils, go. So, thank, thank. so as uh, we have observed uh, in other areas of our country, presidential transitions can sometimes be complicated things. Uh, but at Duke, presidential transitions are always seamless. And uh, uh, Vince will become president on July 1 of next year. Until then, uh, Duke's outstanding uh, ninth president will be running the university and will doing, be doing the outstanding job that he has been doing for 12 and a half years. I think it's uh, clear to me that Dick is very pleased with the decision, but rather than let myself uh, communicate Dick's views, I think it'd be best to hear from our ninth president, Dick Broadhead. Oh, come on, come on. You understand I had no idea I was going to be asked to speak on this occasion, nor did I understand that I was about to get a standing ovation. So the second of those probably makes it worth attempting the first. I, I am not the attraction of this event. I am not the speaker on this occasion. So let me just say a few things. On a day when the weather was exactly the same as this at almost the very same time in early December in the year 2003, my wife and I were walked out of the Allen Building, then to Perkins Library to the Rare Book Room, where I was introduced, and I was entrusted with the promise and the reality of this uh, university. You know, it's a thrilling moment when it happens, and you really don't know exactly what it means when it, uh, when it happens, uh, but that's probably just as well. Uh, but I would say, <laughs> I would say there's a way in which 13 years is a lot of days, but then there's another way in which it passes in the twinkle of an eye. Uh, and so I'd have to say, you know, I look at you, 13, 23, 33 years from now, uh, some, some 11th president will come along and you will find that 10th isn't the highest number uh, of presidents of Duke. Uh, just say this, uh, I have been uh, uh, honored beyond belief and uh, it has been uh, the most important and uh, uh, one of the deeply satisfying things in my life to be the president of this university. Uh, I've had complete confidence uh, that I knew when the time was when it would be good to have a transition. I informed the board of that. Uh, 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 Jack Bovender was asked to chair the search committee. I then knew that he wouldn't screw up and then I hoped he wouldn't screw up. Uh, <laughs> It was not my business to be part of the search, although I was informed and my uh, help was, was sought in, I think, quite appropriate ways. But when I heard that Vince Price had entered the sphere of consideration, I thought, well, I don't need to worry about this anymore. Uh, and uh, so as the process continued, uh, you and I don't know each other as well as we will, but I certainly know you by reputation uh, uh, in the highest possible terms, and you and my contact, uh, contact with each other has given me a sense that your reputation only begins to describe the reality of your care for education, your comprehensive commitment to education, and your ability to appreciate the special qualities of this university and carry them forward. 
Uh, I uh, was given a great gift when I became president, which is I had a wonderful predecessor, uh, Nan Cohan, uh, and she and I spent uh, about six months overlapping. It was a very happy period, uh, very free of complexity and tension. Uh, everything I wanted uh, help to understand, she helped me with. Everything I wanted to reach my own views about, she let me reach my own view about. Uh, everything I wanted to know where it was already going, she helped me understand. And everything where I might have wanted to wait and have my own sense of where things should go, uh, I was left to have that freedom. Uh, it would be my aspiration to do the same for you. I believe that you and I will have a, a, a ludicrously unproblematic relation with each other, <laughs> uh, both during the transition and in the long period afterward. Uh, and you know, the main thing is, uh, you and I both know this, it's glorious to be the president. It's glorious uh, to be on the stage, uh, you know, except on the days when it isn't. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, but if, if it is, everybody knows, universities at the end of the day really aren't about their presidents. They really aren't the works of their presidents in, 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 in any solitary sense of the word. They're works of a whole community defining its aspirations, reaching forward to, to, to accomplish them. Uh, I'm proud of what's been done in my presidency, and that continues unabated into your presidency, and I trust long beyond. I wish you a very, very happy life here and a very successful presidency, Vince. So uh, again, let me thank uh, the Presidential Search Committee, uh, Jack and, and Ellen Davis. Ellen, thank you very much for everything you did as the Vice Chair. And could all the members of the Search Committee stand up? Uh, we have a number of here. Can you all stand up? There, here they are. So. So, um, pre President. Uh, uh, Broadhead and President-elect uh, um, Price will be meeting with the press shortly, so I'm going to adjourn. I just would say that some people ask me, because uh, the President-elect uh, is from the University of Pennsylvania, is that why we decided to hold this in the Penn Pavilion? <laughs> um, we actually have planned to do it here anyway, but the man who actually is responsible for the Penn Pavilion is right here, Bob Penn. So thank you very much. So um, please go celebrate today our uh, excellent new president. Thank you all for what you've done to make Duke such a wonderful university, and uh, I hope you have a good day. Thank you.